Happy Thursday, everyone. I'm here with Jasper, that's why I'm laughing. I hope you're all doing well. And uh, I think it's been a week or so since uh, the last time that we talked. And I hope that um, my internet's working fine since we had the storm. So I don't necessarily have a topic tonight. My primary reason for coming on tonight is I wanted to ask and see how everybody is doing. And, you know, it was kind of a question and answer type of thing that I was looking for. Any sneezing I do, it's just allergies. That's all it is. I promise <laughs> you. Um, I just want to let everybody know that. Um, so um, I'm really on here because I wanted to say hi to everybody. And I want to know, you know, I also know everyone's going through an extremely stressful time. Um, you know, our routines have changed, our patterns have changed, our, our, our independence have changed, our space has been invaded, and that has changed. We haven't been able to go to our hairdresser or things like that. And all of that, for people who have anxiety, for people who have depression, for people who just on, on a normal basis are used to going to their job and coming home and so on, has uprooted them. And when you're ungrounded, which is the base of the spine, the tribal chakra, it tends to create a whole lot of uncertainty and a whole lot of fear. So, and it's very easy to get uprooted and it's very easy to get ungrounded when you're in a state of fear. And one of the reasons why we go into fear is we like to know what's going on. We like to know how long is this going to last? How long am I going to be locked up? How long am I going to be stuck at home with the kids? God bless you. How long <laughs> am I going to, you know, be this here? And then there's this other very um, important component to it. People are losing their jobs and people are unable to feed their families and people are unable to do certain things. So just remember kids, if you get any of that stimulus checks, give it to your parents so they can keep the lights on it's very important so and this is a time of bonding but if we look at this just in our own personal growth it's um there's somebody just mentioned is you know it's uh we're going through grief there's people who are dying and they're unable to bury their dead um, the way that they normally would because we can't go into um, you know, funeral homes and things like that there. So it's an entire state of grief that we're in. And that's all based in two chakras. One is the base of the spine, which I said is the tribal chakra. And then, it's not just gonna be question and answers, but Isaac's here, so I'm just going on. And then the second is the secondary chakra, which is a reproductive reproductive organs and that controls emotions desires sexuality creativity finances all of those things and when those two chakras started to start to act up it starts to give us a world of uncertainty and we don't like that as, as humans and spirits we don't like that so on the um on the spiritual realm it's helping us grow but on the physical realm it makes us extremely uncertain so i'm here to tell you that it's okay to feel uncertain it's okay to feel a little anxious. It's okay to, but try not to tap into all the negativity that's out there, that's on Facebook, that's on social media, that's on television, that's on whatever. Because this is a time of gratitude, meaning that if you have a roof over your head, if the lights are on, if you're able to feed your family, if you're able to do the basic things, you're, you're beating a lot of people right now. So, and it's really a time of looking about what we have. It's also, I was talking to somebody today and they said something very interesting to me is, Phil, this time that I have had off, um, because of their profession, they had to close down. This time that I've had off has allowed me to bond with my children that I haven't been able to do the way my wife's been able to do. And I thought it was such an interesting um, statement because, um, you know, as a father, they want him, him wanting to do this here. So what it's doing is it's creating this um, dynamic where it's allowing people to explore things about themselves that they normally wouldn't get to explore otherwise. And I think that's part of um, the importance about this is happening. I was talking to my, one of my, uh, well, my best friend, I don't have any best friends, so I was talking to my best friend today and he says, Phil, you know, why don't you and Isaac talk about, you know, why has this happened and what's going on? And, you know, this is not the first time that we've seen anything like this here. 
This is not the first time that, um, you know, the world has gone through this here. And yes, we're in a crisis. And yes, we're doing this here. Uh, uh, social distancing, which is unusual, particularly for Americans. Um, you know, it's unusual behavior for us. But at the same time, it is helping flattening the curve. And that's, that's what we want to do here, is that we don't want this thing to go on. We want to do our best to stay out of it. Now, I'm believe me... I, I'm no expert in any of this here, so, but what I will tell you is um, that when we're in a state of fear, our OCD starts kicking in, and that's where the tribal chakra and, and, and uh, sacrum start interfering with it is, and our, our anxiety starts kicking in about, oh, what's going to happen, and am I going to catch this, and could I transmit this, and what happens if I have an older parent in the house, and so on and so forth, and it just starts snowballing. So what do you do in order to do this here? Well, first and foremost is you have to stop going to the source that creates that in you. You have to stop going to the place that says, okay, this is where I hear all the negative information. You have to stay in a positive place. So for the most part, I don't watch the media um, because it's just, you know, it's just very negative. And um, secondly, I know there's nothing that I can do about it. So um, meaning that I'm not in control about what, what happens to that. But what I am in control of is what I'm going to do in my personal space and how I'm going to control my personal space. And that's really what we're all looking at right now, Isaac says at the moment, is if we break this down moment by moment, week by week, rather than month by month, you'll go mental. So you have to break it down moment by moment. And what it is, is I'm looking at myself and what do I have the opportunity to change? What do I have the opportunity to work on about myself that I didn't get the chance to do when I was working? So what was I doing or what do I need to work on or how can I improve my marriage or how can I improve my relationship? How can I be a better student? How can I be a better kid? How can I be a better whatever the situation may be? But here's the whole thing is that we are learning to be kinder to one another. And as humans, we, we really failed at that. So we did. And I, I, know, I read people all around the world. So on a daily basis, it's not like I just read people, you know, here locally. I read people throughout the world. And we haven't been as kind to each other as the way we have, uh, the way that we could have. Now that we see that this um, pandemic has affected every single living soul on the planet, it's changing how we, hopefully, how we perceive one another and how we can bond together. So I've done enough rambling. Jasper's got his hand up. Go ahead. Honey. So you're talking about chakras earlier. Um, Albert and Rick want to know how. I'm sorry. How are you able to balance those uh, chakras out? How do you line them up? So as I said before, um, balancing out those chakras is first and foremost is you want to control your own space. You want to reground. So you you want you want to. Um, I've said this before, when you are uprooted, it's kind of like pulling a pot, a plant out of a pot and putting it on a tray and say grow. It needs a foundation. So your feet need something to root into. So in order to reground, you want to eliminate the thing that is making you uproot. So if it's negativity, you get rid of that. Once you reground, then the next thing that happens is the second chakra starts repairing itself. So, and that's the beautiful thing about this here. So first and foremost is you want to remove anything that's upsetting you out of your life. So, you know, within reason. Go ahead, babe. Jenny wants to know, uh, Jenny has two questions, please. Are you get there, one. <laughs> are there language barriers when you communicate with loved ones who don't speak English? And what happens if the veil will not open when you're doing a reading? How can the loved one come through? Okay, so is there a language barrier when I'm doing readings? Nope. Um, they speak English to, on the other side, so to me, because they're going to speak the language of the medium. And two, if the veil doesn't lift or if there's no tear in the veil, and that's that high-pitched sound you hear in your your head when you're sitting down by yourself, all of a sudden you hear, bing, um, that's when the other side is opening up to you. That's when the other side is coming through to you. So if the veil doesn't lift, then you're not able to read anybody. So that rarely ever happens. So um, meaning that people that contact me for reading ha have lost somebody significant in their life. And, um, or they're calling because they want to use the life, life guide part of my gift where they're learning about 
what to change and what to let go of and things like that. And that's where your guides come through and, and make that happen. So, um, but if the veil doesn't open, then there's no reading. But um, if it does open, which always does, then you, the other side comes through. I don't know why it wouldn't open though. Go ahead. So now with the coronavirus affecting us jobs and us being at home. I don't know if he's asking this or if this is someone else asking this, <laughs> but go ahead. Uh, I now have a lot of time to myself and I feel like I'm reliving my grief. What should I do? Hmm. So, Phil, I now have a lot of time on myself. I can't go to the office. I can't take time off my hands. I can't uh, get a distraction in here. I can't get this. What do I do? We have to create a distraction because what happens is when people are in grief, they go to work and for eight hours, they're able to forget about what happened or hopefully they're able to forget about what happened. But when you're in work, uh, I'm sorry, when you're at home and you have to work, um, you start to relive your PTSD type of grief and everything that's going on with it. So what do you do? You gotta create a distraction. You gotta change up the room that you're in. You gotta change up the room that you used to sit in. You gotta change up the place, um, the, f the way the furniture is. You gotta recreate a new space, but you can't live your old life based on what was. And that's one of the things that I have learned is through grief is that people want to continue their life, and I'm guilty of this, based on the way it used to be. And it can't happen. It's over. When, when there's a death, it is the end of a chapter. And it's heart-wrenching, and it's heartbreaking. But there's no going back. And I know there's no going back because I tried. So, and I've been at this a very long time. So I tried to recreate a life that was before Denise passed, and it couldn't happen. So I had to, and Isaac said to me many times, Phil, you have to create life without her being here. And that's when my healing started to take place. So once I went into acceptance, it's when healing started to take place for me. But taking place was, going into acceptance is very, very difficult, and it's very, very painful. And that's why I took the time off that I needed to take time off for, because um, I needed time to grieve. And there was this whole debate, if you take this time off, you can't do this, blah, blah, blah. There was all of this craziness going through my head, but in my heart, I knew I needed to heal because I was gonna prolong my healing. I know I'm going on about this here, but I think it's relevant, is I knew I was gonna prolong my, my healing if I didn't take time off and I didn't go through this. And people don't have a lot the luxury of doing that, I did. But if you do, now's the time to get through your grief. Now's the time to really analyze what are you grieving. Are you grieving the physical loss or the spiritual loss of the person? Are you grieving what they used to do for you or are you grieving that you, you used to um, do everything together? Is this your soulmate or is this somebody that, you, you know, that used to have control over you? I mean, there's so many different levels to grief that I'm learning that it's, um, it's, it's staggering, it's never ending. Go ahead, babe. Um, so Linda wants to know, do our spirits come closer to us during a pandemic like this, uh, rather than any other time? Just that's, serious. that's a great question. So what are our guides doing to us, um, or doing with us during this time? So are they being helpful? Are they just letting it run its course? Are they just doing, you know, whatever? So what happens is your guides step in and they get closer to you during a uh, time of crisis. So to try and keep us safe and try and tell you, hey, listen, wash your hands. Hey, listen, stay out of public places. Hey, listen, don't go to these places and you won't get sick. And your guide would be whispering that over and over again. Now, why? Why would your guide do that? Well, it is for the better of mankind. And that's the whole purpose of this here is, is, is it for the better of mankind? And that's when guides always step in, is if it's here to help you and it's here to help other people. If it's not, it won't... Um, they don't step in like that there. But during this time of crisis, the, uh, all of our guides are very much next to our sides to keep us safe. That was a great question. Go ahead, honey. Do, uh, Gail wants to know, Gail Egger wants to know, does a soul ever die? Great question. Does a soul ever die, Gail? And the question, the answer to that is no. Um, souls never die. So Kim wants to know, how do we keep up so I'm sorry, honey. Oh. So souls don't die because they're in. I was listening to Isaac. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I was. That was my bad. Um, I, I was listening to Isaac there about why souls don't die. They're indestructible, he says. So um, because souls are a, a consciousness of God's 
consciousness, the best way to describe it, or how he describes it to me, or how it has been described to me, is, is that we are a part of that consciousness. It cannot, it can't end. So it can't be destroyed, it can't die. Um, you know, it's the same thing with soulmates. Soulmates always come back together. Now, that doesn't mean that they're always supposed to meet up on Earth, because sometimes soulmates come back together saying that I'm going to stay out of this lifetime with you, but we cross paths. So, and then all memories come flooding back. And I'll do a special on this here one night. All memories come flooding back of all previous lives. And it's instantaneous draw. So, and I always say this to, uh, to Jasper, I've always said this to people um, that know us. The, the second I met him, I knew I, would, I was going to be with him for the rest of my life. And... Um, I, did, I instantly was drawn to him, so it, and it, it spoke to me, and that's the, that's the difference between soulmates. Now he could be sitting over here, going to be like, I didn't feel like that way. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were some old man <laughs> hitting on me. I'm a slight bit older than Jasper, so he could be sitting over here, be like, I didn't feel that way at all. <laughs> so of I it's a, that but um, you know, it's a, but so, but soulmates always, they always come back together, so they do, and um what do you call it? and they but they always should be they should they always um will come back for a reason together or they stay apart depending on that go ahead babe uh amanda wants to know since we're here to learn and grow do we choose what we look like before we come to earth because that can impact our actions and experience absolutely you choose the vessel that you're coming to earth in so i chose voila mm -hmm. so i know and some people choose that fine you know fit body and then some other people choose you know um what do you call it? where they want to live in the world so it, it all depends on this here but here's the thing it's not oh, the physical vessel really how it houses the soul and so in the soul this is where the knowledge comes from this is where this is where all of all of um your your wisdom is coming from so does it does it impede where the contract is going? Depending on the way the vessel is, yes, absolutely. But also, I've seen people who are disabled who are much more evolved than people who are not. So I have. So it all depends on the vessel and what's going on with it. Go ahead, babe. Uh, so Jenny wants to know... I'm sorry, no. Steve wants to know, I have had constant headaches lately. I feel it's stress of the current situation. Do I need to open my crown chakra? I'm still grieving my mom, who I lost a year ago. Mm. How do I get out of, out of this feeling of stress? Yeah, so stress will create those migraines, and they'll they'll create those those headaches. They'll create those those pains. They'll create this. So, um, do you need to open the crown chakra? A hundred percent. Now, you would think that you would open the crown chakra in order to release. Actually, you would be opening the crown chakra to bring in information. So, and if it's shut down, what happens is pressure starts to uh, greet, uh, starts to collect. Just like if you unground, ground, you start to feel unstable. Just like if something emotional happens, you, you feel a broken heart. Just like if someone takes your voice and or um, prevents you from saying your truth, this, your throat chakra will shut down. So once we open up our crown chakra, this is where relief comes. And then the other thing that happens is, and this is a nice thing that happens, is you start getting visitations. You start getting clarity from the other side. Go ahead, babe. Uh, just one minute. So I hope everybody's doing well during all this here. I know I, 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 know I went on this question and answers um, kick um, for, for the night. So... Is it possible to connect with angels uh, and guardians? Can they give us a message also? So your angels and guides or guardians or who, whatever you want to call them, um, they, they do t talk to me the way that your family members talk to me. So when people call up and they haven't had, or if they have a reading with me, um, and they don't have, let's just say, a close family member that happen, happens to have passed, a guide steps in or an angel steps in, depending on what you have. And that individual gives me the information that's going on in your life. So um, it, it gives me, it, it tells me that, okay, this is what you need to change. This is what you need to let go of. This is what you need to work with. This is what you need to, um, so on and so forth. And then I relay that money, that back to you, that uh, memory back to you. So, and I say memory because it's stored in the contract. So it is an actual memory of what's co going on inside you. A lot of people think that the contract has, is being lived out, but it's, um, it's, 
predicted, maybe, but it's actually a memory inside the soul. And the soul is saying, okay, I know this. I'm going to follow it. And then your human side says, mm-mm, I'm going to do whatever I want to do. So, And then your soul says, mm-mm, we're going to do this here. So then there's conflict that starts going on. And then that conflict starts coming out physically. So it does, or emotionally, or mentally, or whatever the situation goes on. But if you listen to your gut, you'll always be guided to where you need to be. You know what else I want to talk about? And I shouldn't say this here. But I really want to talk about the Tiger King. Does anybody watch the Tiger King? So uh, Jasper hasn't seen it, but I think it's the greatest show on Netflix. And I just want to throw it out there. And I know half of you will say, no, it's awful. And the other half of you will agree with me. But um, so anyway, I just wanted to, I just witnessed that show. So I did. Go ahead, Jasper. So Kristen says, I'm grieving my son on all levels. Am I holding, holding him up? <clears throat> holding him back from evolving. So, Phil, I'm grieving my son on all levels. Am I holding my child back from evolving on the other side? The answer to that question is no. So, what happens is, in this state of horribleness, in this state of grief, um, you're, you're, you're going through this... When you hit grief, is a physiological response. So, everything shuts down. You're, just, you're, in, you're in complete despair. The soul comes in and start saying, okay, I'm going to help you through this. So when you have a sudden loss, if you have a tragic death, if you have, you could be young, you could be old, you, it doesn't matter how old the person is, but when you all of a sudden expect somebody to be there and, and immediately they're gone, you have this horrible response that goes on to it. So what does the soul do? The soul comes in and then says, how do I get my mom, dad, sibling, cousins, whoever it is through this horrible response? So, and they stay around us in order to give us the, the, um, the clarity and the strength that we need um, in order to, to uh, get through the grief. Because grief can last a very long time. So, and does last a very long time in people. And anyone that has gone through it will tell you that they carry it around on a daily basis. Go ahead, honey. Uh, Christy wants to know, does everybody have a soul name? Everyone. <sighs> yes. Everyone has a soulmate. So, but what everybody does not have is patience. So remember, you have to elevate to certain specific places in order to meet your soulmate. You can't be there and your soulmate be here and you bring them up. You have to be on the same level. So when you're crossing, <laughs> you're laughing, I'm not sure what you're laughing about. Oh no, it's a, a right. question. <laughs> so when you're crossing, all of a sudden um, what happens is your, your energies are drawn together. And that could happen... You could be in your 30s, you could be in your 50s, you could be in your 60s. It doesn't matter when it happens, but it could happen. Also, just because you have a soulmate does not make them, and I need to say this because I have a lot of clients who are in the same boat. Like, I have people who meet people and they have significant age difference and people can't believe that it works out. So don't expect your soulmate to be in the same vessel that you're in. Always remember that. Go ahead, baby. James wants to know, does, James. You, does your spiritual guide, Isaac, have a sense of humor? Does he ever <laughs> laugh at you? Or <laughs> he, uh, if you do something really stupid that causes you to laugh at yourself? Yes. So he has a great sense of humor. I will, I will be honest with you. But he has a very dry sense of humor. So, and, and, um, so, he's not, he, so when he makes a joke, it's very serious. And you just can't help but laugh at it. And you say, you're, you, you're just like, really? You couldn't have said that anything else? And then I'll do stuff. And he's very, um, and he'll look at me in a very bizarre fashion. And, and he'll actually say to me, like, you, you, you crack yourself up. Like, you, you make yourself laugh. So, and I'm like, yes, I do. You know, I, I do. I have. So we have a very, our relationship is not parental. Our relationship is very much guide medium. And what do you call it? Although I, I trust Isaac with all of my entire being, um, it's not like he is the first person I see when I wake up next, other than Jasper and the last person I see when I go to sleep. So it has been that way since I was 20 years old. So it's a long time. Um, and we have a very, 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 very special bond. So we do. And our bond is special in the sense where I listen to him. And a lot of people don't want to listen to their guides. I mean, you have to go back. I go back a very long time. I just told me to quit my job. And I did. And became a medium. 
Okay, so I gave up secure. I mean, people thought I had absolutely lost my mind. So, and I trusted him that much where I, I resigned and I started and I became a medium. And people just thought I had lost my mind, but I knew in my heart that Isaac was right and this is what I was going to do. So, go ahead, babe. Uh, Melissa wants to know. Is it possible for life to be so traumatic that it actually regresses your soul's advancement in evolving and learning? No. So it's a great question. Can your life be so traumatic that it regresses the soul? Absolutely not. Actually, the more traumatic your soul has gone, the more trauma your soul has gone through, the, the more it actually elevates. So it doesn't regress the soul whatsoever. And unfortunately, um, unfortunately, it's a... Uh, it's a horrible experience, but you can't regress the soul. See, remember, the soul's already coming in. Let's just assume you're not. Let's just assume you're not a new soul. The soul's coming in with um, previous lifetimes, so you can't wash those away. You can't make those go away. Now, my problem was I came in with no lifetime, so I was I was a new soul. So I was an indigo child. I'll do a special on indigo children. They're a pain in the ass. So you probably you all probably have one, and you're gonna be like, "That's my kid." Um, <laughs> So, and yes, I was that child. So, and they're, they're, they're very gifted in the, this here. But, um, so, but a soul cannot regress because you can't wash away what was going on with it. So you can't, but what it will do is it'll elevate through these very traumatic experiences. People say to me all the time, why would I pick this contract? Why would I do this situation? And the thing is that although it's a short lifetime that we're living, it's, um, it still is adding to the book. And this book that we carry is the soul. And this book is going to cross over to the other side, go through the soul review. And hopefully it, it always elevates mankind. And that's the whole purpose of coming back and reincarnating. Go ahead, babe. Marsha Schultz wants to know, will my mom finally know the truth about what really happened now that she's transitioned? Ooh, so here's the other thing that happens too. So souls cross over. And let's say they didn't believe a story or a situation or an accusation or whatever you want to call it um, when you're here on earth and they cross over. They then go through their soul review. They see everything that happened. So good and bad. They see it all. They see the thing that, that you may have wanted them to see and they refuse to see. They see it in its full clarity. So there's no hiding that from the soul. So a lot of people think that souls don't feel emotion, and they very much do feel emotion. Um, so it's, it's processed differently, and it's, um, it's handled differently, but they feel the same emotion that we feel on a daily basis. So um, they, it's just not crippling like the way that our grief is. Go ahead, babe. Uh, Kim Neolander uh, wants to know, how, how do you know when a guide is talking to you versus your own thoughts? So often when your guide's talking to you, you feel it in your gut. You feel it in your solar plexus, which is right above your belly button. And, you're just, and you know that feeling is like, I should not go down that dark alley. You know that feeling? Yeah, everybody's had that feeling. <laughs> and you're like, ooh, I'm going to go down that dark alley. <laughs> so it's... Um, and I remember being in New Orleans with Jasper and this was this foggy night and we had this situation. My gut was like, we should not go down this alley. And we did go down this alley. So we did. So, but my whole gut told you, that's your guide. Isaac was like, do not go down that alley. So, and um, what do you call it? And it was, uh, and then your head, when it t your head's talking to you, it's all up here. So it is. So, and it's, and it's chatter, 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 chatter. Guides are very clear. They're very concise. They say, stay put, don't move. This is the way you're going to do this. It's, it's very, very clear, but you always feel it in your gut. All right, so we have the last question of the night. Go ahead. Um, Denise has a quick question uh, asking about, can you talk a little bit about prayer or the definition or purpose of a prayer? So the, so the purpose of a prayer is the same form as of meditation. And what I mean by the meditation is when you pray, it puts you in a form of clarity. It opens up the crown chakra. And it allows you to connect with the other side. And by connecting to the other side, not only do they hear you, but they're also able to give you information and connection that you need. So the purpose of a prayer is important. It doesn't have to be a religious prayer. It can simply be a conversation in a quiet place or whatever, whatever it will be. Um, so, it, but it, is, it does have relevance to a lot of people. People ask me all the time, well, Phil, I prayed and it didn't save this individual's life. Remember, 
the prayer is not going to interfere with the contract, but what it is going to do is give you clarity of why these things are happening, what's taking place, and what's happened, and um, what what you're grieving and what you're going through. Somebody asked me, and I'm laughing about it, will Donald Trump win or will Bigfoot eat them? I have no idea. I'm um, having a lot of feedback about Tiger King. Though. So, you know, I'm very, <laughs> listen, guys, I, I really would want to go into this Tiger King thing, okay? Like, I wasn't expecting this. Um, hey, Annie, haven't seen you in a long time. Hi, Patty. So, uh, this Tiger King situation is like, you know, Carol Baskin. I mean, can we talk about Carol Baskin? <laughs> I don't even know if I can say this, but I'm saying it so it is. So, it's, um, so, anyway, but thank you all for listening, and I'm glad that I was able to check in. I'm glad that um, I was able to share. I love you all. Thank you all for um, connecting with me. And hopefully that we get through this here together. And anybody that hasn't seen the Tiger King, including Jasper, please go do it. And most importantly, stay safe. So anybody that wants to have an appointment with me, go to philquinn.com. Also, anybody that has an in-person appointment with me, I can't see you in person, so that has to be changed to either Skype, FaceTime, or phone. And um, hi, Kelly. And so that's about it. So I love you all. And again, if you need me, philquinn.com. Talk to you soon. Have a great Thursday night.